As a freelance web designer and developer, we need our own portfolio websites to show off our services, our work, so that potential clients can go through that and then hire us as a designer or developer. And with that, in this video, I'm gonna show you five amazing web design portfolios that you can use as inspiration and stick around for the bonus as that portfolio is that good or so good that people have actually copied the website and the owner of the website had to make an additional website showcasing all of the copies that people have made of his portfolio. And let's get straight into the first one that is by Ilya or Ilja uh, Fun Ek. And the first thing we can see is he is a Webflow developer and digital designer. This is something that I really like because a lot of us, and I've seen a lot of portfolios, we try to sound very elegant or uh, very unique and artsy. And so we would write creating digital experiences and it sounds nice. However, the customer wants to know exactly what you do. And by not being straight to the point, they're not gonna understand what you do and they'll probably click off and find somebody else who tells them exactly what it is that they do. Anyway, first thing we can do is we can actually change the color, right? So we have greenish, a uh, reddish, and a simple white and gray. I'll keep this as I like it. We have a very short about section, right? A nice picture of him. This is something that I do recommend. Have a professional picture of yourself. It can be a headshot, it can be a full body. If you do have the time, uh, or the camera to get a very nice picture or even with an iPhone or Android, it is gonna help you in the long term. Then a very quick about me section, creative developer, and then this is what he does. So in most cases, the best structure is to have these services or past case studies and work at the very top. In this case, he has what he does, so his services, Webflow development, uh, another Webflow developer, very nice. Uh, digital design, art direction, and interaction design. We can also explore his work immediately there, or we can see some of his case studies right here in this section. Very nice. The only slight downside is this font isn't very readable. It's very creative, it's very unique. People are gonna remember his website because of this font, but some people might not be able to, to read it. And we'll go ahead and click on one of the case studies, this one. And a case study section on your website is very important. Don't just have very nice images and mock-ups like this, but I would also recommend going a bit more in-depth into the process and design decisions of the website. And so if the goal of the website was to elevate the brand's digital presence and also attracting new customers, I would actually write that down in the case study section and then also go into more depth of the issues or problems that the client was facing and how you were able to help them with your services and with your expertise, as that is ultimately what the client wants to figure out why should we hire you? Is it because you can just create nice designs or is it because you actually understand the problems and issues that my company is facing? And can you help us through that? And so after his case study section on his homepage, we then have awards and recognition. If you have any, this is the place where to put it, right? If you have some awards, this is gonna obviously do you very, very well. Also a very nice effect that we've seen in 2022, I believe in 2023 a lot, is where we have these sections, when you hover over it, you see an image correlated to that element. Client testimonials, something very important. I am not a huge fan of how we set this up. I think it can be nicer if you would actually have the testimonial a bit larger and also already opened when scrolling. But overall, this portfolio has all the elements that you need. He has the service that he offers. He has projects and case studies and also case study pages. Plus, of course, testimonials. Once you have your first testimonial, put it on your website. Also, if you can get a video testimonial from a client, if they're up for it, that is really gonna help build up your social proof and that is something that you can upload to Instagram, to Facebook or to LinkedIn and show your potential customers of how well you did on your past project. And also I do want to mention that we have a newly launched school where you get 100% free Go High Level software which is insane and you also get all of my automations so you can completely automate your entire outreach strategy within Go High Level which you get for free within the group or you can start cold calling with a phone number in Go High Level. So you don't need to use your own telephone. You can get a US number and then start calling prospects or leads within the US, the UK, Australia, wherever you want to. We also have sales scripts, onboarding tutorials, outreach strategies, and so much more. And as you can see, uh, I actually made a video very recently of the sales calls and how you do that. So what questions to ask uh, a potential client. And we also have eight 
group coaching calls every single month. You get DM access to myself. You can win hundreds of dollars. We are currently selecting a winner that is going to receive $500 by participating in our design challenge. You also get a 24 seven AI appointment booking bot pre-built into the 100% free go high level software that you get by being part of the community. And the main part of the school is I want to teach people on how to get inbound leads. So not just doing outreach, but actively getting people to book calls from your website that you published that they see on Instagram, LinkedIn, YouTube, and other platforms with some strategies. Link is in the description and I hope to see you on the next call. Next up, we have Oi Mahi. This is a bit of a different style. This is something that I really enjoy. It's a very minimalistic, clean design. It's a duo, but I still categorize this as a, a freelancing uh, team. And again, we have a, a hero image of the two people that work in the company and selected work. Again, you either want to have the services that you offer or some past case studies or work at the very top. Also, I know a lot of you do not actually have any clients yet, but I would recommend something that I mentioned in this video on how to get your first client is go ahead and create two to three example designs. This is how I landed my very first client and that you can also see how I did that uh, right there. Create some design examples and put it on your portfolio website. Make sure that you don't just copy somebody else or take somebody else's work and show it or present it as your own. Do not do that. That's going to get you in a lot of trouble. Plus, it's just not morally right. But create your own designs, upload them and fill out, you know, this selected work section. And of course, we can go into the individual case studies and a very nice hero section with, again, beautiful mockups. If you can spend $20, $30, $50 on 50 or a range of mockups that are professional for your work that you can also upload to Instagram, I would definitely recommend it. I've done that myself and it really goes a long way into upping your quality of your portfolio. And here we have a brief description of the company. We have the client, the services that he did, and then also a button to view the actual live website. And it just feels really, really professional. So I would always recommend creating an extra case study page. And then here we have the result, right? So we have a testimonial section as well in the case study. Also, if you have an image of your client and he allows you to use it, definitely add that. And then below that, we have a very unique design style for listing the services we have brand identity web design web development and then also here's some sub points to the individual services so sitemap for uh, web design uh, wireframes website design responsive mobile figma style guide ux and copywriting so this is just a nice list of everything that you get for each service and then a call to action remember to have a couple of call to actions throughout your website don't just have one at the very top or in the banner don't forget to sprinkle some uh, throughout the design such as this one we have an index and then uh, Webflow development. So these are a Webflow partner, which is always great to list out. And it just continues with some nice designs. Again, this overlapping image section. Plus, uh, these are the integrations that they use. This is something that I haven't seen on a lot of websites and that I would recommend. I might actually do this myself uh, when I rebrand my own website. So they use Canonly, Typeform, Lottie, Zapier, uh, Cookie Consent, uh, Google Tag Manager, etc., etc. Stripe, of course. And then we have a very unique section for testimonials. I actually really, really love this website. Uh, so again, we have a project image, the person, right, the actual uh, client, and then a brief testimonial that they gave to them. And a nice footer to end off the portfolio. And now I know some of you aren't always a fan of very clean, simple websites. You want to express yourself a bit more and show your true colors and your personal design style. And that is where Alejandro comes in. This is a very in your face or out there design. It's not necessarily my taste, but I think it's great when designers can be unique. And that's exactly what this website is. We have Hola, a little about section. And again, this font is very creative. The only slight negative side or point that I would say is that some clients who aren't a fan of this design style, this might put them off. However, for those who do like it, I think they're going to be very impressed that uh, this designer is very bold with his style and with his design decisions. And then here, as with the previous ones, we have a couple of projects or case studies. 
and once again, the image overlay section, and then who, right, who he is. And also, this is a slight or quick reminder, you do not need to create an entire website with about page, service page, contact page. A one page and like this one is more than enough. Just again, make sure to have services, work, a small about section, testimonials if you have some, and a contact section, whether that be a Kennedy link, a form, or just an email. Here we have his journey being a designer 2011 through 13, and then it will switch to 2024. Here we have some testimonials again, and also this is quite unique. I would always try and integrate something that is unique, whether that be an animation, a type of font, selection of imagery, try and stand out. Don't be cookie cutter and just have very basic text. For some of you, it might take some time to get to that point where you can really express yourself through design, but try and start from the very beginning as it really is going to help. And actually a quick mention, we have a free Discord community. Link is in the description where we go on weekly Q&A calls, or if you are looking for some cold callers, some other designers or developers to hire, then make sure to join, link is in the description. Now we have Todor, I think I'm pronouncing that correctly, a digital designer specializing in web design, UI, UX, Webflow, front end development. And this is a take on a more simple approach in terms of the design style. We have a small about section or pretty much like his mission, right? He's helping startups and business owners to make a visual statement through spotless web design and development so they can increase brand awareness, awareness and sell more. Amazing. And I just want to say this again, please do not copy any of these designs or this text one-to-one. -one. I see a lot of you doing exactly that. And I'll show you at the end of this video exactly what happens when you do that. Take inspiration, but come up with something yourself. It's not going to benefit you in the long run when you just copy somebody else's design. And then here we have the services, design, development, the full package. So probably design and development and selected works. And as you can see, it's a theme. Uh, but with this image overlay, we have a unique effect where it skews or distorts slightly the image when we move the mouse and it has this highlight or contrast effect. And this is one way to make this image overlay unique. And I think that's a nice way to look at creating your own design and not just copying something, take inspiration such as the overlay, but then add your own take, your own style, your own design or, or effect to it, which will make you stand out from, from everybody else. And then this is a process section. A lot of clients actually want to know what the process is of creating a website. So here we go. The first thing is a UX and wireframe. Here we map out the elements clearly so you can see what elements will be built into the end product and have a better idea of the intended behavior end users will have whilst using it. Then we go on to web design, web development, and then analytics setup and support. And so to add to this structure I mentioned previously, we have about services work contact and I would also add a process section. And then finally, of course, uh, let's talk about a project collaboration or an idea you may have, and then drop me a line. And by the way, this is also a one pager, plus we have a light and dark effect. This actually looks very nice as well. Maybe some more color would have actually been nice with this neon green yellow. Maybe, maybe the numbers here or these numbers below, just something to think about, but overall very nice and clean portfolio. And here we have Denny's, a very unique home page or hero section. And as we can scroll, immediately we can tell that this person knows how to develop more than just a very basic uh, templatey website. Then we have uh, a very cool turning image, which you'll see in a second. So as we scroll, it's actually going to turn and then show his, his full face. Plus we have this, I don't know, this isn't really Tetris, but we have a blocky arcade effect. And I'm going to say this again, try and add something unique, right? This is one of those things. Add an animation, add a certain color, a uh, text, a uh, layout. Be different to everybody else. Be different to everybody else who is watching this video, right? I want you to look at all the comments, all the likes, all the views, and look at them at competitors. All of these thousands of people, hopefully, <laughs> uh, want to create websites for clients. How are you going to stand out? How are you going to be different? How is your website going to attract a customer over somebody else's portfolio? Just something to think about. And then here, a very unique interaction where we can grab these and move around. This is, again, just going to help you build that memorability with your potential client. And so somebody might think, okay, there's this designer and this designer, and then they might remember that this website or you had this very cool interaction, and that might be the only reason why somebody goes with you, hypothetically, right? Moving on to the services, when we scroll down, we have design, uh, development, 
and I guess a full website. Then some of these selected works, we have this arcade uh, type of effect once more. And then as we scroll, we have more projects. And here we have a cool call to action. Your project can go here, right? And so this is just a cool CTA. And so if we were to click on this, this will then take us to the email to email the designer. Then some more links, Dribble, Behance. We can see some more projects. Great use of, of imagery. Uh, let's start creating together. One thing I would remember is that 99 or 97% of potential clients or so prospects do not want to book a call or call you right now. And so a lot of them will try and find a different way to get in contact with you, whether that be an email or probably better yet would just be a form. And now the moment that you've all been waiting for, we have Dennis Schnellenberg or Schnellenberg, a freelance designer and developer. A lot of you probably have seen this portfolio already, but you haven't seen the amount of people that have copied his website, which I'll show you in just a second. But let's quickly go over his portfolio. Very nice hero image of himself. We have a, again, unique, well, it's not unique anymore, but it was back then a unique uh, animation with his name very blatantly freelance designer and developer, right? People know exactly what it is that he does, located in the Netherlands, and then a nice about section. And then if we go to about me, this will take us to the about page, helping brands thrive in the digital world. And then this is what he can help you with, design, development, the full package, and of course the footer to get in touch with him. And that opens up the contact page, a nice form, or you can contact him by email or actually just give him a call. But let's go back to the home page. And after the about section, we once more have the uh, image overlay effect with some of his recent work. And again, some more recent work. I would always try and have the designs that you've created or if you don't even have any projects, like I mentioned earlier, create some example designs, two, three, four, five, upload them to your website and showcase them as that is what people want to see. I've never had a client not want to see some work. So definitely make sure that you have that. But now let's take a look at the website that he created to showcase all of the websites or all of the people that copied him. It's actually copydennis.com. And look at that. Countless people copying, I mean, almost one to one uh, copying his design. Now, some of them look a little bit unique, such as this one. We have, I see, one, two, three elements that are pretty much copy paste, but some people didn't even try to make it unique, such as these first, I mean, almost all of them, to be honest. Yeah, it's not a great look, especially when the designer of the actual or initial portfolio of the original one sees this and will showcase how you blatantly copied his designs. And so by showing you this website, I hope that you have now got the point that you should never copy paste, take inspiration, but make it your own, add your own animations, your own color, your own layout, your own uh, design style, your own effects to really make it your own. Look at all of the people in the comments, the likes, the views, of this video and look at them as your competition. How are you gonna stand out from all of these fish in the sea as there are a lot of designers and a lot of developers these days that are doing the exact same, right? They're offering the exact same service, but those who stand out, those who have a nice portfolio, those who create some great designs, those who have a unique outreach strategy that I also teach you in the school or Discord, links in the description, those people are going to win over all of the other freelancers. And so I hope this video helped you. Again, all of the links to these websites in the description. Also, all of the tools that I use to manage my business and uh, web design agency are also in the description. And next, you can watch this video that has five of the best web design agency websites in case you are starting an agency that again, you can use as inspiration. And also in this video, I show you the best lead generation tool that is on the market. Thanks for watching. Please like, subscribe, and remember to maximize your luck.